Rock Band 4 is the latest evolution in music games, only it feels like multiple giant steps backwards. While it retains the bass fun and thrills you're nearly guaranteed by playing a music game, many prominent features from previous titles are inexplicably missing, and it makes what was supposed to be a triumphant return of the rhythm genre become a watered-down experience that tastes like the bottom of a soda can. I really enjoy playing Rock Band 4, like I have all its other installments, but given what didn't transfer from old titles into this new-gen adventure, I wonder if it wouldn't have been a better idea to just port Rock Band 3 with some new bonus songs. They say you don't know what you've got till it's gone. Well, let's look at what's gone. These aren't in order, by the way. Number one, keys. What did you do with the keys? The keyboard was my favorite instrument of Rock Band 3. I have a piano background, and the way the instrument controller was designed made it super easy to just sit on my lap and instantly play expert difficulty songs. Because it's five buttons like guitar, only with keys you can use your thumb so you never need to move your hand. Keys were probably the most accessible instrument Rock Band ever had, so why throw them away? Pro Keys was a different story, obviously, but the cool thing about Pro Keys was you could use them to learn the actual right-hand keyboard parts to the songs you were playing, so you could turn around and play them on a real piano. Pro Keys, along with Pro Drums, really made strides to bridge the gap between playing music and playing music. Keys were my best instrument. I peaked at number 67 on the leaderboards with those ivory finger fuckers, so they have a soft spot in my heart. A big selling point of Rock Band 4 was the ability to use your old instruments to play the new game, but it appears that they tried their best to make that not too valuable by scrapping the old instruments entirely. I never played pro guitar, so I don't miss it terribly, but I'm sure other people do. Keys, pro keys, pro guitar all in the wind, and technically pro drums too since Harmonix neglected to make new cymbal add-ons for their new drum peripheral for reasons that betray an extremely tentative marketing strategy that cost them my admiration and is the next subject on this list. Number two, good marketing and product coordination. The only thing Rock Band 4 succeeded in building for itself before release was hype, and hype might be all you need to get sales, but most companies add to that by also doing the basics, such as communicating with the platforms their games are going to be released on. There's a fatal flaw in your strategy when you can't buy Rock Band 4 instruments outside of a bundle that comes with the game, but you can also pre-order the digital version of the game before you find out that you can't buy Rock Band 4 instruments outside of a bundle that comes with the game. I pre-ordered Rock Band 4 digitally a month before it was released, thinking there was no way way a group of people could have such low situational awareness as to allow digital pre-orders of a game without instruments when you can only buy instruments with the game. I went to Best Buy with the intent of purchasing two guitars and a drum set, with no game, since I already had it. I walked out of there with two guitars and a drum set, and two extra copies of the game for no fucking reason other than they couldn't be separated. Was a digital pre-order supposed to be exclusively for people who had old instruments they could use? That would have been a nice little nugget of information to communicate, and not in some obscure game magazine interview, but on the actual description of the item in the store. I would have enjoyed reading something along the lines of, Warning! We are not selling instruments separately from the game for reasons we're not even sure of. Please only digitally pre-order Rock Band 4 if you have old instruments in tow, and refrain from making a YouTube video scrutinizing our baffling practices. Rock Band 4 would have you believe it came screaming onto the shelves, but it's a facade overlaying whimpers and mules as it struggles to climb up with so many missing limbs. I can't believe, after all we've experienced from being Rock Band fans, that the drums do not automatically either come with silencer pads, or even better, have them built in. It's been five years since Rock Band 3 came out. You think my silencers aren't shreds of dust in a landfill by now after taking consistent beatings for half a decade? Cut out the annoying eBay Amazon middlemen and ship them with the drums. They're a vital part of not being cursed out by anyone who lives in your house with you. Not to mention when you use the silencers, you're afforded the luxury of actually hearing the music you're playing. Number three, online. So I have friends who have their own rock band setups, and they don't necessarily want to have to come over to my house every time they want to play it with me. In an alternate, yet equally possible reality, I am the only person in my entire town who plays rock band, and I need bodies on other instruments to get band high scores, which are otherwise unachievable. If you've ever joined a band from an ad in a newspaper, you know that playing with strangers can be just as fun and rewarding as playing with friends. Four people from different walks of life coming together to create, or simulate, already established music, but hey, it's still powerful. I can 100% a song on expert guitar and look at the band leaderboards to see that I'm only in the top 26% just because I don't have other losers to add their scores to mine. That stirs a feeling of dissatisfaction deep within me. So far, the closest thing to online I can get with Rock Band 4 is share playing it while my friend who plays medium difficulty watches and laughs every time I miss a note, like he'd fucking last 10 seconds in that song. Number 4, Score Duels. I have two Rock Band 4 guitars. That means I should have the freedom of two people playing guitar parts, instead of forcing one of us onto bass. Score duels were the best way to do that. For us in the end, score duels weren't even about who won or lost. It was the fun of playing the same part and seeing where our accuracy deviated, and just both experiencing the cool riffs instead of playing whole notes on bass all damn day. 
But when you did feel like getting competitive, Rock Band 2 had online score duels. Online score duels, which were the battleground for many bombastic shredding wars, the likes of which unfortunately haven't been seen since. My question is why Rock Band feels like it can't expand in one direction without contracting in another. I wanted Rock Band 4 to be a culmination of all the Rock Band features across all titles, but instead it's a culmination of about half of them, and not even the particularly good ones. It's still a super fun game that does a fair amount of things right. I'm especially happy with how fun the hardest songs are. It takes me back to the glory days of Flirting with Disaster and Green Grass and High Tides from the first Rock Band, both of which need to find their way into this game. The freestyle guitar solos are a good idea and fun, but unfortunately in the high difficulties not as fun as the actual solos they replace. Being able to improvise notes on vocals without being penalized is terrific, even if the game still has trouble recognizing pitch with certain styles of singing, but remembering that I had to spend an extra 120 bucks to buy extra copies of the game I didn't want, only being able to customize your character, your character, and not your bandmates in tour mode, among the game's other pratfalls, and you may understand why I'm a little disappointed. That being said, it's still a fun experience, and with the promise of post-launch updates to the game, maybe some of these gripes will go away. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to uh, like, share, and subscribe if you want, and I'll see you guys next time.